Hello and welcome to this clip going through question 5a and 5b from the 2019 Unified Chemistry paper, which was also part of our college mock exam. The first part is a levelled response question. So that means it's marked on scientific points plus clarity of expression. So you've got to take a slightly different approach when you're answering this type of question. So before I, I start one of these, I always do a bit of a plan, so I have something to think about and a kind of template to work through. So it says calculate delta sol H um, for copper sulfate solid for reaction 5.2 and determine the enthalpy change of reaction delta RH. So if we look at the information we're given, you can see that they've got three equations they want you to use. So you need to use those equations to construct your Hess cycle. So it says including an energy cycle linking the enthalpy changes. So I'm going to divide up my page into two sections so I can deal with each section separately. So the first thing to do is to look at the data I'm given. So I need to do Q equals MC delta T. I need to think about what M actually is. So using the appropriate data, you can see that you've got 50.70 grams of solution. Now we need to get delta T. So by subtracting the original temperature from the final temperature, you get 13.5 degrees C. Now we can work out Q. So that comes out as 2861.001 joules, or 2.861001 kilojoules. So now what we've got to do is get the number of moles of copper sulfate that's been used. So changing colours slightly just to keep it all a little bit manageable in terms of the numbers that are popping up on the screen, by subtracting the mass of the empty bottle from the mass of the bottle plus the copper sulfate we get 7.98 grams. So now what we can do is work out uh, the delta sol H. So to do this we need to divide the value for Q in kilojoules by the number of moles of copper sulfate that were used. So the number of moles was 0 0.05. So that gives us 57.22 kilojoules per mole to the minus 1. So now we can do the Hess cycle. So you start by writing out the reaction on the top that you're not sure of the answer to. That's what they want you to calculate. So the bottom part of your Hess cycle is what the species on the, either the left or the right-hand side of your top equation can turn into. So I'm looking at reaction 5.2 and reaction 5.3. So if we look more closely at reaction 5.2 and reaction 5.3, that's what they have in common. So the arrows have to point downwards towards those products. So it also says that in experiment two, a student carries out a second experiment, but this time with the hydrated salt. And this time they got point, uh, plus 8.43. So you can put that on the right-hand side. Now you have to follow the indirect route, which I've indicated using a little dotted arrow. And now I'm just going to create a bit of space on the bottom left-hand corner to work this out. So if I follow the dotted arrow, I'm going in the same direction of travel as the minus 57.22, so this keeps its sign. But I need to change the sign around um, for the 8.43, because I'm pointing in the opposite direction to its arrow, so the two arrows are in opposite directions, as you can see. So that becomes minus 57.22 plus minus 8.43, which gives us minus 65.65 kilojoules per mole. So the next part is about percentage uncertainty. So the thermometer had an uncertainty in each temperature reading of plus or minus 0.1 degrees C. 
It's important to remember that thermometer readings are measurements by difference. So there's a start temperature and a finish temperature. So the uncertainty is applied twice. So the mathematical idea is that you're trying to work out the temperature change. So therefore, that's going to be x. Now, it says that the student calculates a 20% uncertainty. So we can put 20 in there. Now, if we multiply it up by 100 on the left-hand side, that allows us to get rid of the times 100 on the right-hand side. So that now means 0 0.2 is, not, is equal to 0 0.1 times 2 over x. So therefore, x must be 1 degree Celsius. So let's move the page down and do the entropy part. So, it says the standard enthalpy of reaction and the standard free energy change delta G for converting anhydrous sodium thiosulfate to hydrated sodium thiosulfate are shown below. So you get given delta G. So it's worth noting that this is actually slightly different to what you might be used to in textbooks because you're given the Gibbs energy this time round. Sorry, I forgot to put in that it was uh, what it is we're looking for and how many marks were available. So let's start by writing down the Gibbs equation because then we can start putting in what we know. So although they don't give you the temperature, you can assume it's 298 Kelvin because all the quoted values are under standard conditions. If you look at the little symbol next to S, for example, or the symbol next to G, or the symbol next to H, that, that means it's standard conditions. So, because all of the other values you've just inserted are in terms of kilojoules per mole, the entropy change you've now worked out is in kilojoules per Kelvin per mole, but it needs to be converted into joules per Kelvin per mole. Because if you check the units for entropy in the table, that is in joules per Kelvin per mole. So to do that, you need to multiply it up by a thousand. Okay, now we've got the entropy change. We can work out the missing entropy of the substance we're asked to calculate. So we want the standard entropy of anhydrous sodium thiosulfate. So if we just lay out the calculation you need to work out the entropy of an individual species, We've got the product, there's only one product, and that's your hydrated sodium thiosulfate, which is 372.4. And from that, you subtract five waters plus your unknown um, entropy, which is the anhydrous one they're trying to get you to work out. Remembering, of course, that delta S has been just calculated as minus 133.2214785. So solving for x and making sure it's to three significant figures, we end up getting plus 156. Okay, so hopefully um, you're able to see how each individual step was a separate piece of processing. That would probably be marked separately and you'd obviously have um, some kind of ECF applied as well, error carried forward if you got it wrong a little bit earlier on. Okay, so hopefully the whole um, clip was fairly useful if this is the part of the paper that you wanted to have a look at. So thanks for listening as always and until next time, see you soon.